What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. And this is a breaking video that I've been waiting for about a week to make. Finally, the data has arrived. The Keystone State Big Data Poll October 2022 is finally here. The most anticipated poll Richard Barris is going to release for the final week of the election, or close enough to the final week. I think he's releasing one in Arizona, Nevada, etc. But this is the one that I've the mo been the most intrigued about. Why? Well, obvious reasons. There's a certain governor's race here that we got to look at very closely. And I want to tell you guys something. The top line, when we get to the governorship, I, I think that Mastrano sells a shot. It's a slim shot, but... Even the top line, you look at the cross tabs. I think there is something happening here in Pennsylvania. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share it with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow that Twitter account in the description down below. And join the channel today. That is right, folks. For just 10 cents a day, you could join Real American Politics. Only 10 cents a day. Recommend you join as it supports the daily content. The daily content. We all love the daily content. So I hope you join today. All right. No more intro. Let's get into it. So, like I said in the intro, the governorship we'll get to because it is a fascinating race when you look at the cross tabs. But let's get to the one that I think people were more expecting of the Senate race. Oz is ahead of Fetterman by around two points. And this two point lead that Oz has more than likely is going to grow. Want to know why? Of the undecided voters, there's 22 of them. 22 of the sample size, again, this isn't like 22 in the entire state of Pennsylvania. No, 22 of the remaining undecided voters, which is 2% of the electorate, only 6 come from the Democrat parts of the state. Philadelphia, southeastern Pennsylvania, or Allegheny. The rest comes from either the toss-up or the purple part of the state, like northeastern Pennsylvania, or the blood-red central or west PA. Only 27% of undecided voters in the Senate race comes from blue areas. So where is Fenneman going to be able to pick up the remaining votes from? The answer? He really can't. In fact, this may get kind of ugly. Because you look at these unde these undecideds, again, let's say they break towards odds. That alone is probably like a three and three half point victory for odds. But you got the independent candidates who, they tend to underperform polling. Even for Richard Barris, they tend to underperform polling by a half point or so in total. But even then, let's say that breaks for odds. Now you're talking about a close, maybe a four to five point victory for Oz instead of a 3-4 to four victory. You see my point that this could get kind of ugly. And there is one part of the state I want to focus on mostly. Dutch PA. And we'll get to the governorship because this will be more clear. But I think there is something brewing in Pennsylvania for the governor's race. But for the Senate race, we'll stick to for a minute. Look at this number here. Oz is at 47%. Okay? 47. Fetterman's at 46 this is Dutch PA. It's not Southeast. It's past Chester. It's Lancaster, York, Adams, Cumberland, Daffin, Lebanon, etc. I don't think, I think Franklin, according to this, let's see. This is from the official poll. This is the methodology. Yeah, Franklin. So these counties here, they are Dutch PA. And look at the amount of votes here. And they're basically all Republican. Lancaster voting for Trump by 15. York by 25, etc. The only part is Daffin, which barely went to Biden. But look at these other areas. Look how many votes Republicans get here. I mean, they get 160,000, 146,000. And they just crush it in these part, this part of the state. But this is why I think there is a mishappening in PA. Even for Barris, I... Again, Barris is the best pollster. He knows what he's doing. But he even admitted there's a chance he's missing some Republican voters. Look at that Dutch number. Oz is only up by a point. When, realistically, Trump probably won this area by 
I would guess 12, 13, maybe 15, based on what I'm seeing right here. Again, I don't have the exact numbers, you know, pulled up on a spreadsheet, but based on this part of the state, you can probably guess, probably is like a 15-point victory. So a 14-point shift towards Fetterman? Uh, I don't see that really happening, especially with Oz winning independence by a point. He's winning 93% of Republicans. Again, there's some Republicans that are from, you know, Delaware County that voted for Romney. Yes, there's those types. But even then, that's including a lot of those rural voters, you know, in the T, in places like York, etc. Well, not York's in Dutch country, but you talk about the T, you know, places like Clearfield, Cameron, etc. But you get the point. And that's why I think that there is going to be some kind of a miss. Central West PA, they seem right again. I'm just not looking at some spreadsheet and getting the exact estimates, but these look right. But I think it's time we look at the governorship. Here we have it, folks. Josh Shapiro is down by four and a half, or up by four and a half points. I'm sorry, if some of you are listening, you're about to lose it, but don't worry. I meant Shapiro was winning the race by four and a half points, according to this poll. But here's something that I think is happening in PA. Number one, look at Shapiro's number. You know my rule, if you're an incumbent or essentially an incumbent like Shapiro is, he's a statewide incumbent, you're below 50% in this type of an environment. After you spent, I think it was $40 million attacking Mastriano, you're only at 48.5%? You see why I have hope for Mastriano still? Sure, it's not like a 80% chance he wins, I still give Mastriano a shot. It's not likely, but the fact that Shapiro is below 50% in the poll, not even like 49.8, he's at 48.7 after all the amount of money he spent on Mastriano. And there's a guess that I have that I think could be right. I think Mastriano's number is getting weighed down by voters that they privately are going to vote for Mastriano, obviously. But they don't want to admit it. They want, don't want to be targeted as an extremist. Remember? Does that remind you of a certain orange man? But I think this is even more extreme. Because Shapiro has been painting Mastriano as a you know, Confederate war hero and all this other crap. So that's why I think there's going to be a big vote miss. But why in particular? Look at Dutch PA. Look at that. Mastriano's only getting 43% of the vote in Dutch PA. Now, Southeast PA, 33%. That's about what I kind of expected. But Dutch PA, one of the more Republican parts of the state. And you're starting to get close to where he's from. Close to the T. You're going to really tell me that the part of the state that he just ran it up. He's going to do worse than Trump. In fact, lose the area that Trump won by like double digits by eight. I just don't see that happening. Now, the other numbers like Allegheny, Philadelphia, or Philadelphia is actually better than Trump. But Southeast Allegheny, that's about what I expected. But look at Northeastern Pennsylvania. This is the part of the state that I flat out said. If Mastrano ends up winning this by like four to five points, Northeast Pennsylvania, which again includes Carbon, Luzerne, etc. These counties up here. If he wins it by as a few points, you know, four to five points, he has a shot. He's currently winning it by around three. So with all this in mind, the fact that Shapiro spent fifty million, I think it's fifty million, on painting Mastrano as a Confederate war hero and you know, basically a neo-Nazi. The fact that he's still below fifty, and Mastrano has actually gone up in this poll from the last month. There's a shot Moss Channel has. Now, the undecideds, there's around only 4% of undecideds, which is smaller than Shapiro's margin. But I truly think some of those voters in Dutch, the Dutch part of the state, they're bullshitting you. Even Barris admitted he's having trouble reaching some of these voters. Like, sure, there's a serious shot Moss Channel can lose, but there's one thing I'll guarantee. He will not lose Dutch by 8 points. It just won't happen. The only way Shapiro could win Dutch, you have to win Cumberland and Lancaster. That's the only way you can win Dutch by that amount. You may have to win York. You really think that many voters who voted for Trump are Republican 
who, yes, some Republicans in Southeast PA, they're going to vote for Mastri or Oz, but not for Mastriano. You really think these voters in places like York, they're going to abandon Mastriano by that much? I just don't see it. That's the type of voter that he's going to win by a lot. So we just got to see what happens. But that's why I think there is a shot here that Mastriano can pull it off. And once again, let's go by education. You know me, I love looking at education. And look at this. Look at the remaining undecideds. A majority of them don't have a college degree. Yes, there's a substantial amount that do. But who are these voters? Because if these voters are like in central PA and they have an advanced degree, they're more than likely probably going to have a chance to break for Mastriano. But we just got to see. Again, a lot of things could change. The fact that Mastriano is only down by four and a half, considering the amount of money he's been outspent, considering the fact he's been painted as a neo-Nazi, considering the fact there's a serious social desirability bias in this race, there's a shot. There is an absolute shot Mastriano could pull this off. But we just got to see what happens. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow that Twitter account in the description down below. And join the channel today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.